Hi folks, Florida Man here. Today I bring you a little bit of a treat, an after action report on the very first game of online diplomacy I ever completed. I played the game on Play Diplomacy, but I have reconstructed it on Backstabber, because it's kinda old. The game was played on the classic map. It was called Let's Play, admittedly not a very original name, and I played as Russia. I think this game must have been between a bunch of relative newer players, not just me, because there were a number of misorders and missed seasons, although the missed seasons might have been because we played with 12-hour deadlines, which is realistically only plausible when you don't have too many inflexible constraints on your time or you don't sleep. I was in college at the time that I played this game, by the way, so I was just fine. In spring 1901, I established positive relations with all of my neighbors without really committing to any of them. You will notice that my opening in this game was extremely non-committal. Very unusually for me, I didn't really pursue either Turkey or Austria. I didn't move to Galicia, instead holding in Warsaw, which allowed Austria to take that space. Turkey and I had a coordinated bounce in the Black Sea, but his moves were otherwise oriented toward attacking Austria. Germany was kind enough to open to Holland rather than Denmark, which meant the only moves that were arguably dangerous to me were Austria's move to Galicia and England's decision to open north. We will see what England intended to do in the fall. In Italy, we had a very typical opening that looked like a setup for a standard Lepanto, most likely, and France opened so as to guarantee Belgium, in my perception. In fall, France's opening proved not to be successful in what I conjectured was its intended goal, because Germany tried his own supported attack on Belgium at the same time, a surprisingly bold move, considering France could possibly have snuck into Munich while Germany was trying for Belgium. To their west, England took Norway with a fleet, which was a relief to me, and England tried a convoy into Denmark, which bounced with Germany's attempt to take that space. The really interesting thing here is that all of the Western powers were at odds, fighting over the neutrals around them rather than cooperating in any way. None of them supported the moves of the others this season, which explains those bounces and led to a suboptimal result for all of them. It may indicate they'll have trouble cooperating against the Eastern powers later, if that proves necessary. To the south, Italy really bungled his orders. He tried to convoy into Tunis, but he accidentally ordered his convoy into the Tyrrhenian Sea. This resulted in Italy being the only power who didn't have a single build. To the east, since Austria had opened to Galicia, and Turkey had opened against Austria, it was pretty clear who my real friend was. Turkey agreed to support me into Romania, and he did so, which allowed me to take it even though Austria also supported himself into Romania. Turkey also rearranged his other units so that he could move his fleet out through Constantinople and attack Austria and Italy. Again, it seemed fairly clear I had a true ally in Turkey, and with that first year I had two builds thanks to a friendly Turk and a friendly German, despite my timid opening moves. Someone did call us out as a juggernaut in the public press, though. We'll see if anyone actually acts to stop us under that presumption. In the build phase, I acquired a North Coast fleet, intending to support the friendly Germans against the English, and I also got a Sevastopol army to purge the south of the Austrian menace. Turkey acquired a new fleet, planning to go after Austria and Italy with that. Austria built an army in Budapest, and Italy had no build, as we've mentioned previously. France missed the build completely, leaving him at a disadvantage relative to everyone else, and England built a London fleet. In spring 1902, I attempted attacks on both fronts. Nothing really moved in the south, because Turkey and I miscommunicated and also made relatively conservative moves, and Austria successfully defended the space of Galicia, directly extending his own lifespan. On the other hand, my attack on Norway was surprisingly successful. I was fortunate there because England failed to enter orders at all, perhaps because of the short deadlines. He also took a while entering his retreat when the phase ended. Someone made an anonymous statement in the public press during the retreats, which read, England, your vessel appears to be on fire. Perhaps you ought to retreat and perform maintenance so that the rest of us may move our non-burning soldiers and vessels. To make matters worse for himself, he tried to order a retreat to Sweden, apparently not realizing that was where my attack came from, so his fleet was disbanded. To the south, Italy again attempted a convoy, and he again did it wrong, which was hilarious. This time, he was clearly trying to convoy to Greece, which would have succeeded and had Austrian support, with the slight problem that he accidentally ordered the convoy of Venice to Venice. The funny thing for me is that France and Germany again clashed over Belgium, and again, neither of them succeed in taking it, because they both apparently wanted that center equally badly, so they bounce again. In fall, Germany won the clash over Belgium, because France failed to enter any orders. At the same time, Germany again failed to secure Denmark, because he and England bounced there. 
To the north of both of them, I tried to move Norway to North Sea and St. Pete to Norway to help Germany in fighting England, but that also bounced. Of course, I was really happy to gain Norway, so it didn't sting too much that I failed to take North Sea, cut support from North Sea, or bounce England out of there. To the south, though, I actually took damage. I tried to rotate my units around Romania so I would have an army there rather than a fleet, and Austria chose this moment to support himself into Romania from Budapest, which succeeded because I failed to secure Turkish support for the move of Ukraine to Romania. On the bright side, Turkey convoyed into Greece, which effectively achieved the tactical goal I'd had for this year of getting another army into the fight with Austria. In Italy, meanwhile, he attempted another convoy, and he misordered it again. Although at least he made a different mistake this time. He convoyed Naples to Naples instead of Venice to Venice, so at least he got closer to a correct order. In the build phase, I got to build a new army in Moscow, having chosen to destroy the Romania fleet. Turkey and Austria each got a new army as well, while Germany acquired a fleet in Kiel, and France got a new army and a new fleet. It seemed to me that Germany, France, and I might all be ready to work together against the menace of the North, England. In spring 1903, England again made a bunch of moves that just bounced, predictably failing again to take Denmark. France walked into the uncontested English Channel. Even if the Channel had been contested, though, France would have taken it because, surprise surprise, Germany was actually using his fleet in Belgium to support that move. So France and Germany were finally no longer at odds. They were working together against the English. That didn't mean they trusted each other. You'll notice that Picardy supported Burgundy to hold in place, as if France was worried about an immediate German double-cross. Still, they were both putting a lot of skin into this war with England. France had two fleets he'd moved into the English Channel and Mid-Atlantic Ocean, while Germany had three fleets and had supported the Channel move and also supported himself into Denmark, causing all of the English moves to bounce. As for me, my moves in the north were pretty conservative and defensive in spring 1903. I moved Norway to Sweden and St. Pete to Norway to consolidate what I had and make it difficult for me to lose Sweden. Those German fleets made me a little nervous. In fall, England and MR allowing France to convoy onto Wales and move into the North Atlantic Ocean without any opposition. France and I both ordered support for a move of Germany's Denmark fleet to North Sea, but Germany surprised us both by making what seems to have been a late change to instead use Denmark to support Baltic Sea into Sweden. Since Norway was supporting Denmark into North Sea, I wasn't supporting Sweden to hold, so I lost it, although I did retreat into the strategically important space of Skagerrak. In the south, however, Turkey and I made progress that compensated for the loss of Sweden in the north. We successfully defended the recaptured Romania, took Galicia, and perhaps most importantly, we got Italy moving into the Adriatic Sea to help us against Austria, which we thought would basically seal Austria's doom. This was very important because Austria was certainly one of the more tactically competent players thus far. With the build phase, Italy got a fleet in Naples, Austria felt forced to destroy the Serbian army, and Germany ominously built two fleets as if he was preparing to launch a naval war against me and England and possibly France all by himself. In spring 1904, Italy made the concerning decision to support his new fleet into the Ionian Sea and move Venice to Piedmont, indicating his previous decision to work with us against Austria probably didn't take. He also made a strange move where he tried to order Tunis to support itself in place, which meant Tunis just held. Unfortunately, my only dependable ally, Turkey, failed to enter orders this season, those 12-hour deadlines coming home to roost, but it didn't do any real damage this time, since there were no supported attacks on either Turkey or myself in the south this season. Austria just moved defensively, tapping Greece to cut support that wasn't there, and supporting himself into Serbia. My moves in the south were oriented towards surrounding Austria more thoroughly. I moved Galicia into Bohemia and Warsaw into Galicia, supporting Romania to hold. In the north, Germany's betrayal had made both of us nervous about each other, so you see our pairs of fleets are up there both moving defensively. Norway and Skagerrak just support each other to hold, and Denmark and Sweden support each other to hold. Germany tried some unsupported moves to rearrange his units to better attack England and perhaps also myself, but those moves were not all successful. In particular, he failed to get into North Sea or to put his kill fleet in Holland, because he had no support for any of his moves from anyone. France made a clear, albeit not entirely successful, effort to go it al completely alone against England, given that Germany had proven treacherous and that I was not able to help right then. However, France did make the pro-German move of finally vacating Burgundy. England continued to be in a very bad situation, but for this season at least, he successfully defended Liverpool and didn't lose North Sea. In fall 1904, though, England started to run out of luck, as France and Germany were directly collaborating again. 
France walked into Liverpool unopposed and supported Belgium into North Sea, reducing England to two centres surrounded by enemy units. Unfortunately, Germany continued trying to fight me, despite the fact that we had been negotiating peace. He tried supporting Sweden into Skagerrak. This move was unsuccessful, because I made the same move I had in spring, supporting Skagerrak to hold with Norway. More annoying, though, Germany went so far as to work with Austria, my sworn enemy, supporting Vienna into Bohemia. This season made clear that there was now a sort of de facto central triple operating, although not with much cohesion so far. Unfortunately for Germany, he chose to join hands with Austria and Italy at just the wrong moment. Austria and Italy were finally coordinating, but so were Turkey and I, and the last few years of working together had put us in a much stronger position. Now we finally pressed into Austria and took advantage of the work we'd done in prior years. We launched a joint attack on Budapest, Serbia, and Ionian Sea, capturing all three. Italy had tried to move to Greece, which would have cut support for the Turkish attack on Serbia, but because it was a convoy, and his fleet was dislodged, the move failed. It's pretty funny just how many failed convoys Italy had in this game, and they were all because of human error. This season in particular, if Italy had not ordered Adriatic Sea to support Albania to hold, and had instead ordered support for the Ionian to hold, Italy would have successfully taken Greece, and we would have failed at taking Serbia although Budapest would have still fallen, drastically changing the balance of power in the east. This tactical error was especially jarring and silly because of the lack of any possible threat to Albania from Turkey or me. Austria complained in the public press, Italy, I've never seen somebody doing so bad orders in my life. We're gonna fall because you failed too many times. Bon appetito, juggernaut. I found that especially funny because in my head, that reads as Austria writing his criticisms of Italy in a bad French or Italian accent, which I tried to replicate a little bit. The disses of Italy continued, with France chiming in, I am sorry, Austria, that you were forced to work with Italy. Looks like Italy screwed the pooch. Austria replied, Just think about Italy invaded Tunisia spring 1903, lol. On the other hand, Italy's decision to walk into Piedmont last season paid dividends, because this season he snuck into Marseille albeit with France now in position to retake it immediately. The end result of the season was that England lost a fleet, Austria retreated into his remaining two home centres, which are now his only centres, and I retreated forward from Bohemia into Tyrolia. In the build phase, Austria kept his units in Trieste and Bohemia. Italy got a fleet in Rome, Turkey acquired a fleet in Smyrna, and I built a fleet in the north coast of St. Pete. I was still hoping to make up with Germany, and possibly work together in the west since I expected he would not remain allied to the dying Austrian, and knew he would have trouble with France soon given that England was collapsing. In spring 1905, Germany still supported an attack on Skagerrak, apparently feeling very threatened by the presence of that fleet, but I think I showed by my moves that I was really not hostile to him at all, at least not for right now. I moved Skagerrak up to Norway and Norway to Norwegian Sea, so I would be able to participate more directly in the war in the west. Frankly, I think Germany's moves this season were all just a waste of energy on his part. He was trying to fight me, but he was fighting a shadow. He moved into Skagerrak with overwhelming force, at the same time that I vacated it willingly. He moved to Tyrolia at the same time that I vacated it willingly. And Germany's other moves didn't advance his front in any direction. Speaking of Tyrolia, I had told Italy he could join me at this point and be my partner instead of Turkey if he supported me into Trieste this season. I seriously considered actually following through with that, because with Italy as my partner, I thought I might easily solo, but I ultimately decided he was too incompetent to assist me effectively, and that inviting Turkish reprisals against me by stabbing him now would be a bad idea. So I instead moved to Rolia into Vienna, leaving Trieste for Turkey to conquer, as agreed upon. The Italian moveset that included supporting me into Trieste did not, unfortunately for Italy, include defending Venice at all, which allowed Austria's army in Trieste to just walk in. And this sort of thing demonstrates, really, why Italy couldn't be my partner in crime. Meanwhile, to the south, Turkey made an extremely competent choice of moves, supporting Greece up into Albania so he could secure Trieste in the fall, advancing through the Mediterranean to get a better angle on, of attack on Italy, and supporting Serbia in place, just in case I betrayed him as Italy had hoped. This is exactly the kind of contingent planning that you want from an ally. Although it would be nice if he'd make betrayal easy, I also wouldn't want to work with someone like that on a tactical level, when we're still pretty far from the end game. Over on the Western Front, France supported himself into Edinburgh and retook Marseille, although Italy made the intelligent decision to move Marseille into Spain anyway, which meant France would likely be playing whack-a-mole for a while. In fall 1905, England again failed to enter orders. Truth be told, I thought he had given up. He didn't lose anything else, in part because Germany and France were no longer collaborating, and in part because of misorders. 
Germany was supposed to convoy into London, and he made a convoy order but failed to actually order his Belgium unit to move. However, it would have failed anyway, because instead of supporting the convoy actually landing, France supported himself into German-controlled Belgium. Having failed to make up with Germany, I also tried to join in the attack, and France supported Norwegian Sea into North Sea. Unfortunately, this failed due to Germany supporting North Sea in place. Germany also tried to support himself into Norway, which was unsuccessful because I supported that fleet from St. Pete. So the net result was that very little happened in the North this season. In the center, Germany supported Austria hanging on in Venice, for some reason trying to prop up the one center Austrian. Austria made an attempt with his only other unit to walk into Warsaw, but I of course bounced that. Italy and Turkey both made mighty efforts to seize the Ionian Sea, but they only cancelled each other out, and Turkey supported himself into Trieste. In the build phase, Italy destroyed his useless army in Tunis, England destroyed the army in Wales, Germany destroyed the unhelpful army in Tyrolia, clearing the way for Turkey and I to finish demolishing Italy by going through there, and Austria made the choice to destroy the unit in Venice and keep the homeless army in Silesia for greater flexibility. France built a fleet Brest and an army in Paris, I built a Warsaw army, and Turkey built a new fleet in Smyrna. In spring 1906, Germany finally recognized that I was not really his big problem, and we managed to negotiate a shift in units. Germany pulled what he could west to face France. France still felt I was on his side against Germany, which admittedly, I might have been, could have made sense for me, we will see, so he tried to support me into North Sea again. I made some excuse for why I didn't move there, and I instead just supported units to hold in the north for now. France's moves in general didn't work out very well this season, and he only succeeded in positioning to take London. Everything else either held still or bounced, since for some reason he thought he could walk into Holland and that Germany wouldn't defend it. Germany made some defensive moves, including supporting himself into Holland and moving everything else toward the actual enemy, France, but he also left Munich completely undefended for the fall. In the center, Austria tried to tap Galicia for some reason, and instead Galicia forced him out of Silesia. Austria then made the objectively bad decision to retreat into Prussia, instead of one of the open German home centers. I guess you could say he was being loyal, but I would say that really doesn't have much place in diplomacy. Turkey and I succeeded in beginning to empty out the Balkans a little bit, as I moved armies toward Germany while he advanced into Venice and tried to move everything else along toward Italy as well, although Italy bounced some of those moves. In fall 1906, Austria decided to die by moving to Livonia instead of an open German supply center. I guess he was standing by his principles. Turkey failed to enter orders again, and again it had no negative consequences for him because no one was really prepared to exploit the gap in his defenses. Italy tried to walk into Venice but did not support the move, while I continued to demilitarize the border between Turkey and myself. I worked with France this season against Germany again, although we again failed to get me into North Sea. France did, however, succeed in taking London, finally killing England off, and France also took Spain, driving the Italian army into hiding in Portugal. In the center, perhaps the biggest deal was that I took Munich. With Germany at five fleets and only one army, it was something of a miracle he hadn't lost any home centers sooner. In the build phase, Germany destroyed his fleet in Sweden, I built an army in Moscow, France built a fleet in Brest, and Turkey built a fleet in Smyrna. In spring 1907, I tricked Germany into thinking we were allies now. After all my years of moves, showing I was less hostile to him than France was, I think he felt he had nothing to lose by finally trusting in my good intentions. So I walked into Sweden, Kiel, and Berlin, even though Kiel was originally supposed to become French in my discussions with France. The response from Germany was to make jokes in the public press about how there was a wedding between France and Russia happening in Munich, but Russia got all the gifts. On the other hand, France seemed quite alarmed, as if he'd just recognized he might be doing a little too much to help me grow. In the south, Turkey finally forced himself into Ionian Sea, although Italy managed to bounce the Turkish effort to advance on land. Italy tried to persuade Turkey to turn on me, both through private communications with Turkey and through anonymous communications in the public press arguing that if Turkey let me grow, he would be my next victim. It was obvious the communications were from Italy, because they were posted within a minute of Italy posting under his own name, and they were just agreeing with what Italy had said. When I called him out for that, he suggested I should be worried about Turkey turning on me. France advanced into Ruhr and North Africa, although given the results of the spring, neither of those moves guaranteed he'd gain anything. In fall 1907, France was very fortunate and succeeded in supporting himself into Belgium and Portugal, and just walking into Tunis. Germany made a last stab at trying to attack me, but he failed to take Sweden thanks to my seeing it coming, tapping Denmark, and supporting Sweden to hold. In the center, I moved Munich into Burgundy and backfilled Munich. 
This was the beginning of the solo bid that I'm sure everyone could see coming after the almost miraculous results of the last season. And by everyone, I mean everyone in my audience, not everyone on this board. It would be diplomatic malpractice not to take advantage of this opening. All of my other units in the north basically supported each other to hold and remained in place, so I successfully captured Kiel, Berlin, and Sweden this year. In the south, Turkey successfully walked into Rome, but his attempt to take Naples was unsuccessful. Still, Italy was reduced to a single center, Naples, and Germany was similarly reduced to Denmark, and is an entertaining voice in the public press. In the build phase, I got two new armies and a St. Pete North Coast fleet, while my bestest buddy Turkey got another fleet in Smyrna, and France got two armies and a Brest fleet. Germany destroyed everything but Denmark and started calling himself Radio Denmark. <laughs> Spring 1908 was a turning point in the game. France proposed a three-power draw between the three triumvirate powers of himself, me, and Turkey. I communicated with Turkey about this, and we agreed that it was the two of us together forever, and that we'd defeat France and become the only winners of this game. Thank goodness. So I shot down the draw, and I continued advancing against France, and further DMZ'd the area between myself and Turkey to encourage Turkey to do the same. Germany made a comment to France in the public press about how the wedding seemed to be over now, and I commented, resistance was futile. At this point, it seemed very likely to me that I could achieve a solo in this game. I had shown loyalty to Turkey, and he had demonstrated his loyalty in return. I had a lead over all the other powers, and that gap was not closing. And I already had units on both sides of the stalemate line with the West. I had the same number of fleets on the northern front as France, and far more armies. When orders processed, he successfully took North Sea, but I took Holland. I lost Burgundy, but retreated forward into Gascony. Turkey took the last Italian center and began moving toward attacking France from the south. In fall 1908, German-controlled Denmark began supporting me militarily, as the power who had him surrounded and could easily kill him, helping me attempt to retake North Sea from France. This was unsuccessful, and most of the other movements on my end were just units being rearranged, but thanks to the French forcing me out of Gascony, I was able to retreat to Marseille. In the south, Turkey advanced into Tunis, Piedmont, and Tyrrhenian Sea. Crucially, this was also when Turkey decided to leave the last of the centers that bordered my centers unoccupied, opening the door for me to begin moving toward the stab. In the build phase, both Turkey and I made moves that were friendly toward each other, building a fleet and an army each. He put his army in Smyrna, where it was positioned for a convoy, while I put mine in Warsaw, which wasn't quite as dangerous as putting one in Sevastopol would have been for Turkey. In spring 1909, France issued all holds, except that he supported North Sea to hold. France also surrendered. None of this helped his already doomed position, but it also didn't hurt as much as it could have. The reason for this is that although I was still attacking North Sea, Spain, and Belgium, I moved everything else that I could spare toward the border with Turkey, occupying Tyrolia, Vienna, Galicia, and Ukraine. This would be the big, final push. Turkey proposed a two-power draw between himself and me, which I just ignored. In fall, the game was basically a one-on-one -on -one war between me and Turkey, with both the initiative and the numbers on my side. But Turkey still put up a fight. He moved into Tyrolia, Armenia, Gulf of Lyon, Mid-Atlantic Ocean, and Bulgaria, and convoyed into Albania. However, he was unable to defend Trieste or to stop my general move south, and my movement toward taking the island of England also continued forward. In the build phase, Turkey was forced to destroy his Ionian fleet, while I built a fleet in Sevastopol and an army in Warsaw. In spring 1910, I chose to kick Germany out of Denmark, since the game was just about over, and I wanted to conquer as many centers for the win as I could. I told Germany I would allow him to finish with one of his home centers, and that I would take Denmark so I didn't have to support myself in and worry about where he'd retreat to. He just moved out, preparing to take Berlin. By the fall, I succeeded in finishing with well over 18 centers, occupying 21 by the time the game ended. This was the final position, and it was glorious. I hope you enjoyed this after-action report on my very first game of online diplomacy. I thought about calling it Baby's First Diplomacy Game, but that sounded just a little too cutesy. At any rate, it got me off to an auspicious start, and made me want to play another game almost immediately, and it laid the foundation for me considering Russia as one of my favorite powers to play, which it still is, and one of the powers I'm best at playing, which it certainly is. I'm also still fond of the Juggernaut, at least when I'm Russia or Turkey. If you enjoyed this, you know what to do. You like, you subscribe, you comment, and you consider joining our wonderful supporters, whose names are currently on screen. You too can provide moral and logistical support for the Florida Man Diplomacy Empire. We want you for the Alligator Army. Until next time, Florida Man out.